Uh, hello and welcome to Capturing the History of the Bicycle in Original Contemporary Photographica, presented by Lauren Shields. My name is Donald Hyatt. This program is presented from Rochester Public Ri Library, Central Branch Arts Division, and in association with the Buffalo Transportation, Pierce Arrow Museum in Buffalo, New York. Uh, Lauren Shields of Toronto, Canada has been an avid collector and researcher of early bicycling history for over 50 years. He has objects from his collection on display at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto, Canada, Canada Musée d'Industrie et Science in Etienne, France, uh, the Valorama in Nimogen, the Netherlands, and many others. He has presented at numerous venues worldwide, including the George Eastman House in Rochester, New York, and many throughout the USA, England. France, Portugal, Italy, the Netherlands, Czech Republic, and Canada. His collection includes virtually every facet of early sighting, cycling photographica, ephemera, and memorabilia, as well as cycling themselves. And with that, I leave this to Lauren, and thank you so much for all joining us today. Do, what do I do now? You just click in your arrows and it'll do it for you. Well, I, I'll, I'll just read for now, right? My little... Yep. It's all you. So I want to thank everyone. Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon. Guests of Donald Hyatt and the Rochester Public Library, along with the Buffalo Transportation Pierce Arrow Museum. Thanks, everyone, to join me in a travel back in time to visually share contemporary cycling's history. Some musings in a non-specific order. The host functions and location influence some of the images selected. Um, the majority of early cycle development originated in England. It was virtually the center of the bicycle universe post 1870 to the beginning of the 20th century. The bicycle was critically responsible for the important development of automobiles motorcycles, the airplane, and many other aspects of transportation. Huge industries developed in tandem with and or because of it. Sports cycle racing became the largest spectator event from the 1880s to the 1920s. Society was dramatically changed due to the freedoms dictated by the bicycle. The road system did not material change until the, in various names, the League of American Wheelmen, Canadian Wheelmen Association, Cyclo Touring Club, Touring Club de France, etc., brought changes via their good roads movements. The effect and the dramatic effect on women's social history cannot be understated because of the bicycles. Some criteria I used timeline, mechanical development, eye candy famous photographers, representative types of photography, such as daguerreotype, ambrotype, tintype, et cetera. Due to the limited amount of time, other interesting examples, such as the carbo process and opalotypes were not used. All images, notwithstanding the fact that some are dated, we have to use the term circa. And I would appreciate no shots being, no screenshots except personal ones uh, be taken. Aspects considered were racing, social history, including costume, genre as a grouping. Important, please bear in mind a single image with a cycle may have been selected. There might be six, there might be one only of that but six with high wheel bicycles, penny farthing cycles they are commonly known as. That single image might represent one to 30 units made, while the six would have been representative of the hundreds of thousands. We cannot judge that. We could go into it, but not for this venue. All these cycles were part of the history and development. They were all part of the events that led to one result, today's modern bicycle, as you are likely to be riding. All photographs are, are in my personal collection and uh, none are copies and all um, remain, have been used wherever possible to help other cycling um, 
venues and and uh, institutions wherever possible. So thanks. I'm going to start from here. So what we have here is a photograph of a circa 1889 of a English hobby horse, and just I I just want to find out where the Don where where I get the uh, expansion. If you go to the bottom left, there's the little circles and there's a magnifying glass um, somewhere in the bottom left there. Click, click um, the left arrow. My problem is... Left arrow on your keyboard? Yeah, I, I, found, I found it, but um, it's inside the expanded, not this particular, not the last image, but I can't get to it. Now it's 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 to the right of this. So can you see my cursor and I can talk with the cursor? Yes, I can see the cursor. Okay, so I'll use the cursor. Uh, what's interesting, there are many interesting things about this. Uh, the picture was from Hull in the United Kingdom, but some of the wood off the wheel, so they must have pulled this out of a out of a barn somewhere. This is the original 18, late 18, 18, 18, 19, Johnson pattern hobby horse from England. And it's um, it's more or less with the German Dresden what started it all. There's also just this part here, there, there's something missing there, but we can't tell what it is. It may have actually fit in there at one time. So this here is a daguerreotype. This is actually dated on the back 1850. And of all of the photographs and cycling collectors and museums we've been able to find, this is the earliest known dated uh, photograph of a manumotive uh, vel pedimotive velocipede that has provenance. And the, provenance in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, they have other family photos with this Frank B. James, who's from, uh, from Cincinnati, Ohio. And this is dated 1850. And it's, uh, and just a sidebar quick story. The only reason I got this was at the time, the person who owned it was unhappy with a few scratches on the surface. So I was lucky enough it had scratches or unlucky at the time, but lucky enough, otherwise I'd have never gotten it. It would have gone to the Metropolitan Museum with the other images. So this is a quadricycle. This, is a, this maker was Sawyer, it's English, between 1851 and uh, 1860. This is, uh, is from Dover in England. It's a very, very fine construction. You can see the, the quality of the workmanship. It's really beautiful, light wheels, etc. cetera. Uh, this is Henry Hill Hodson is the name and it's an albumin print. This is from France. It's called this, this part here is called a serpentine frame. And uh, it's a Delphine photo, circa 1867. It's got uh, a, a whip there, but those whips were used continuously in Europe more than in North America. They were used to whack dogs because dogs would chase cyclists. People dress like that. It could have been military, but postmen also dress with that same hat. This here is um, Walter Brown. That's his name. Walt, oh, sorry. Uh, up here, Walter Brown. He was a champion rower as well. That was in the at the Boston rink 
50, uh, he wrote, won a race of 50 miles in the rink on a 43 inch Demarest. The Demarest bike was built in New York City. And he talks about what's sort of fun about this is he talks, see his legs. So he must have been some powerful guy for the person to have uh, written that. It's quite interesting. And also, you can see the name Demarest there. That's the name of the maker. So it was early advertising as well. And, and, and these, these are the, these, this group now with the Velocipedes, they're the, uh, they put the pedals and cranks on the, generally the front wheel so that um, independent movement was facilitated. Now, this photo is quite famous. Right there, Helios. Um, that was the name of my bridge. And my bridge was the famous uh, photographer who did the horses with the feet up in the air. He captured those horses or the runners. And it's an important photograph. This was done at, in San Francisco at uh, Mechanics Hall in 1869. And there are four velocipedes there. Two of them um, we know from the style were actually made in San Francisco. It's wonderful. And I, I originally, when I got this, thought this was sand or mud or something but it's a riding school it's actually planked you can see you can see some of the lines going across this way gas lamp it's a important very important photo and up here you've got a um, wooden uh, signage there's no fold to it or anything else it's a, just a wonderful object and when you get in into this stuff you start to see the, like the people and these images become alive. So her name, and it's identified on the bar here, but you can't see it, is Millie Victoria, Queen of the Lofty Wheel. It's a cabinet card circa 1870 from New York City. And the card was photographed on on Broadway and 27th Street. Another Velocipede. This was a pattern that was very common. It was called a Michaud pattern or standard pattern. And uh, after the serpentine pattern, this more or less took over and it was quite popular. Um, this here is an American from North Ohio, circa 1871. It's an amazing machine. It's chain driven. Uh, the inventor did farm machinery. Um, and Louis Schultz, who I was who's on the site now with us, helped me and uh, did some research with and for me. And I did a whole paper just on this one vehicle. But it, there's that's a lamp double chain wheel there's a chain wheel a chain wheel with the chain going around there's, it's on both sides and it's really a, a an amazing vehicle to think that somebody could create that but the creator was an inventor who did this uh, farm machinery and that's that's what his mind developed So this photograph was from Glasgow, Scotland. It's circa 1864. It's probably the earliest recumbent you'll see. Uh, and uh, was used in the paper for, the, for one of the first international cycle history conferences uh, in, in Scotland. Uh, 
and we still do, we see, at our last international cycle history conference this past year in Cremona, Italy, highly recommended the city. It's got um, a violin museum that's absolutely take your breath away. It's amazing how they take focus on one thing like that, but just beautiful stuff. So early, that, that's a, that's a carte de visite. This here is a monocycle. Well, obviously, just in case somebody doesn't know, most people will. Monocycle, you're sitting inside. Unicycle, you're sitting on. You're sitting on on top. Well, this this here was from about 1872. It's a carte de visite, and it's from Birmingham, England. And I, I want to just mention again, it was absolutely amazing that these were all developments and they all led to our current bicycle. We don't look at them that way. We look at them like they're strange, unique vehicles, but they were all on the market. People were trying to sell these and, and develop them for like for the for the next great thing. And they weren't so unusual for people at the time because it was all developmental, but uh, it's quite quite a unique, quite a interesting image. Now, this is from Mohawk, New York. The name of the person was E. Uh, Myers. In, and the Smithsonian Institution has all of the family papers. And... Uh, this is the propeller. And he directed it. And that was gas, air gas. And there's your aerial velocipede or gas kite. That's a, also a cart to the seat. Again, oh, this is circa 1875. And then you had the velocipedes similar to this. This is a little bit more advanced, but the velocipedes started to change and get lighter and the front wheel got a little bit bigger and they came up with wire spokes. There were wire spokes with velocipedes, but it, that was a later development as the wire spokes um, came onto the bicycles. Uh, so did the, the wheels get bigger and the bikes get lighter. And then that, one of the other reasons why the bikes got lighter, these were just solid uh, steel, in the majority of cases, solid steel uh, frames. And then pretty soon, maybe not at, at this time, because this is pretty early. This is circa 1874. But... Um, now you're starting to get the high wheel bicycles. There's the brake mechanism down there. See it? So you got the wire off the handlebar going down. There's a wire there and it goes in and the brake comes down against the rear wheel. This is British. And uh, a gentleman by the name of James Starley invented that wheel. And he's also the person who invented the differential gear for automobiles. And without that invention, you there would not have been an automobile industry or f f without the uh, without the differential. Now, there's, these are two images. I'm going to go back and forth. This is one of the magical things about e eBay did for me. I got both these images about, about 10 years apart off of eBay. And this, this says, James Wall with the first high wheel bicycle made in America, owned by the C.H. McDougal. I believe McDougal. And you can see his facial features and you, you can tell his name. Look how odd this bike is. The pedals are odd. 
the hub is a wooden hub with wooden spokes. Um, and then a little bit later, here he is CJ Wall proprietor, and he was manufactured, he had them manufactured in, in Boston. And these bicycles and tricycles made to order. But now we have, now we know who the first maker of high wheel bikes was in the United States in the United States because of photography and of course eBay, I, I mentioned it. This is about 1876. After 1876, bicycles um, came, came into the American market in strong quantities from England and the American models were, just weren't good enough or reason, properly enough made so that he, this gentleman, um, he sort of would have lost that business. I'm sure he did. Photograph, this is sort of cute, mixture of photography. Photographs of the machine sent on receipts of 10 cents. Wouldn't, I wish I'd have paid 10 cents. For them. Uh, uh, there's about three or four photos that are amongst my my favorite that this is one of them um it's a cabinet card circa 1876 he's got a whip it down there it's an english scene he's got his foot on the backbone see he's got his, his toe there and he'd have kicked the bike holding it up in that position he'd have got some momentum lifted himself up and got on the saddle. Um, that's that's a bell. It's called the Helen Tolman bell. And uh, just the structure of, of the image, the perfectly, uh, the perfect form of, of the close backbone to the wheel. It's just, um, it's just to me, a, a wonderful image. The, the drawer got rid of that. Um, so that's 1876, it's England. So now you've got the high wheel bicycle is pretty well fully developed and had taken over um, most, the, the high wheel bicycle and the tricycle started to take over the industry in, in 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 the world and why the tricycle was because there were a lot of people who were not comfortable getting up on a high wheel bike and they were dangerous so here's a, a picture this uh, uh sorry doug there's this can you see a setup professional audio and audio setting okay it's gone sorry it's gone um he was the head of the cyclo touring club in England, likely his, his uh, son. This is uh, circa 1877. And you've got a nice albumin cabinet card. Now this here, was taken with a Kodak camera and the Kodak had this, the images come out either in the center square or with the circle. And what, what was interesting about the Kodak camera is you mailed in the camera with the, with the film included, they developed the pictures, mailed you back your camera with film in it. And, uh, and and the pictures. So this is an American image. And it was from Rochester, New York. The, the obviously the the Kodak and and that camera. And this is a lovely image. Um, this is New England, 
of circa 1889. Uh, um, you, you can see how the guy chose his path to, to go um, to go along. There's a gas lamp there and it's an albumin photograph. And he, probably a club man. If you could take a look, he's got a little identification on his on his cap in the center. So it's quite rare in these early images to get people moving or on them when when they likely were not or or were not or sorry were, were definitely moving or likely were not uh, in motion. So this is the Boston Bicycle Club. Um, this is the first organized ride for high wheel bicyclers in the United States. And, the, and this photographer, the uh, American uh, Photograph Company in 1878, they did three photographs of, of the ride. So there it is, Chestnut Hill. And this is this is quite an important photograph for American history. It was two years before the start of the League of American Wheels. And here's a, a Notman photo of the League of American Wheelmen on the rocks at Newport on May 31st, 1880. You can see it there. And there were uh, around 100 people in, in that in that shot. And they came from as far away, uh, sorry, not as far away. They came from Canada as well as many from the United States. So this was the first picture from the, or from the meat of the... League of, of American Wheelmen's. And the next are to be two images of, of a bicycle club that, that came together, but they're nice because it's not only photographic history, it's also social history. You'll see the next image. You've got a group ride of likely a club. Uh, it's sort of wonderful to see the little kids. They still do it today. Eh? Little kids running beside something when there's motion. Um, uh, if you can compare the definition with the next photo, you'll see a very slight blur to the images. Well, the blur, you can't help it. It is what it is. But um, they didn't have the fast uh, photography that came that they were continuously striving for. But the other, the accompanying image is they had stopped for rest, and so you can see much better definition to to with the bicycles. But it sort of gives you a nice a, a nice feeling sort of look at the way they stack the bicycles on the ride. It's nice, it's social. Uh, this is probably a, a beer advert because there, there's the the bottles. And these riders, they, when they went out, they went, there was usually a, what they called a sag wagon. So there, you know, somebody, his bike broke or carried supplies or stuff so to find this group stop somewhere and having supplies with them it wasn't with their bikes or on their bikes again uh, those two images are circa 1883 this is um uh, this from springfield massachusetts circa 1883 again and it's just excellent photography it's sharp it's well positioned um there was a big meet annually in springfield mass 
and um, it was one of the highlights in the United States on of cycle racing. Uh, this is the this is in Montreal, Canada. Um, this is in front of the Montreal Amateur Athletic Association. This is early military cycling. So this is the bicycle corps of the Victoria Rifles of Canada, um, eighteen eighty seven, and it. it, it um, that was the headquarters for the Montreal Bicycle Club. And obviously you can see the, uh, the name down there. So you, now you're starting to see the military use of the cycle. But the bicycle was used in, in virtually anything that it could have been used. But it did change military cycling. In World War I... It was uh, phenomenally, there was a lot of cyclist corps and they used them for dispatch riders as well. And also in the Boer War, but it, quite all over the place. But this is a very early, they're very uncommonly found to find picture, military pictures with these real early cycles. This is the St. John's Bicycle Band from St. John's, Michigan. It's a cabinet card of 1887, and they had a bugler and a trumpeter, and uh, they were around from 1886 to 1891. And they have, they also had a picture with a with a drummer as well that I've seen. And. Um, This here is uh, a Woodbury type, and uh, Woodbury types were uh, were a fast process, and they used them for publications. Um, what was nice about this? This is an important bicycle maker, Coventry Machinist, but also to have photography mixed up with inside a catalog. Um, so you, you start to get these things. And as a collector, you're able to acquire things that broaden the scope of your, of your collection. And again, 1878, you can, you can see it up there. It's early. And she's a quadathlon. Uh, no bike, but you can see bicycle there, horseshoes, equestrian. She's a fisher lady and uh, does shooting, uh, shooting as well. Phenomenal dress. That's Borsheim in Germany. Phenomenal. Sorry. Oops. Sorry. Someone was unmuted. I think they were talking in the background. Okay. Uh, I was telling you about how dangerous it was for um, cyclists to be on high wheel bikes. So here's the proof. This is a funiary. This is, there's his picture. There's the back, there's the back wheel the backbone, the handlebars, there's the front wheel and the front fork. So that would have been his bike. And uh, this is saying goodbye. This is about 1888. Now, when the high wheel bikes were, were making their imprint, the tricycles were as well. And this is a lever driven circa 1877. It's called an open front. So 
he's sitting there and this is open in, in front of him. It's lever driven to the rear wheel. You can see the mechanism. And the I gave one of those to Canada's National Museum of Science and Technology in Ottawa, Canada. They they have the one that I had acquired. So these tricycles were there are a lot of really interesting bicycles, but tricycles were really a phenomenal and diverse uh, uh, industry. Uh, here's a, a chain drive, circa 1880, from Exeter in the United Kingdom. You've got a little toolkit here, but what you've got here that's really interesting is a wet plate camera, or uh, sorry, it would have been by then a, a dry plate camera that he could go around here with, and, and here's a lamp as well. So quite an interesting image. Can the guy get any better dress than that? He's got his top hat on. He's got his tie. He's a businessman ready. So that's called Rudge, Daniel Rudge and Company. He would have built that, but uh, it's a Rudge Rotary circa 1885. Very popular model. Um, it came out of, they, they had the same type of bike with levers and it, that developed into the chain model. And this is about 1884. Now, this is row, row, row your something. So this is a rowing mechanism in here. And you've got wires going around. You've got these wheels. You've got springs here. The person who created this thing had to been some kind of a mechanical genius to get it to work. So it was surely safe, and I'm sure he promoted it as the latest and the greatest. Uh, so that's circa 1883. And here's Stonehenge. Uh, this is chain wheel driven. There's no chain. There's a chain wheel there. There's a chain wheel there. And that's how the wheel was propelled. It was open in the front. And this is circa 1882. And this one is also another interesting model. It's called a DOS, a DOS, which translates to back to back. So they both, there's a lever driven. He's got his bugles, I'll mention that in a second, but uh, there's a, a lamp there and that's how they propelled themselves. Now there's a, uh, this person here is, uh, I'll show you him in another picture later. Um, he was quite a, Pearson was his name. And the bugles, they use uh, bugles the same as cavalry messages. So if, if you want to go faster, they they did the cavalry calls, dismount, slow down. And so bugles were, were quite important and quite popular with cycling clubs. And... This is circa 1882. It's all firmly assembled. It's back wheel steering. And if you take a look, you'll see in the construction, this here, these two work together on, on one axle. And um, there, then there's a space. So this guy's riding independently. This guy is independent. So this is Louise Ar Armando, circa 1883. 
the photo was by Jay Wood um, on the Bowery in New York. And she was a French Canadian champion female bike rider of the world. She was a professional, but she did almost all of her riding in the United States. She wasn't known as a, a Canadian. She was uh, known as an American rider. And this is a, a great photograph. This is guys in a racing costume, which is similar to what we have today. But this is George M. Hendy. And Hendy was the guy who started Indian bicycles and Indian motorcycles. So that was him. He was champion uh, amateur bicyclist of America and quite a famous person. His medals are still in existence and they're at a library in Springfield, Massachusetts. And if you see, he was a, a champion, 1882, 83, 84, 85, and 86. That was quite the feat. He was quite an important person. And this here is a interesting image. It's got Roe, who is the, the, uh, Roe and Temple were two of the big uh, names in cycle racing. But what they've done is they were, uh, and they were going fast, obviously, but they, the camera panned on, across and caught them still, but all of the people and, and everything, um, they're all blurry because the camera wasn't fast enough. So this here photograph was 1888. It was done by a firm called Negretti and Zambra. And if you take a look at the quality of the picture, you know, it, it stands out. They were very famous professional photographers in England, and they sold all kinds of equipment, um, counting instruments, air, um, air velocity instruments, um, speed, and, and camera equipment. So... The, and these guys here, one of them's Osmond and the other one's Wilson, were two famous racers at the time. And this was at the Crystal Palace track. And I, I, I sort of like this. I never saw this before. If you take a look at there, there's the straight line for starting, but it was a rope and they just pulled it taut across the, the track. Here's another camera in motion, but it was easier because they were coming towards you. Uh, so the cameras were were getting, the camera development speeds were a little bit faster, but this was done by a, the, the photographer was N.H. Van Sicklin, who also was a famous racer and um, he he won a lot of bicycles. An interesting story about him. He never sold any of the bicycles, but he won a lot of, of them. So he kept them and, and kept them till he passed on. He had over 20 high wheel bikes when he passed. And this is a Chicago photo. And if you take a look just over here, see how the caps marked. You'll see an image later that's relevant. So Chicago, about 18, uh, 1889. Give you some perspective of the amount of people that were um, that were at one of these meets. This is Springfield, Massachusetts in 1893. Uh, and N.H. Van Norman, this this gentleman here was a famous photographer. And you can still see, so this is a high wheel bike more or less was out of the picture by uh, 1890, but there were still people who had them. And, and there's an example of one of them, high wheel bikes.
So here's inside a bicycle shop. This is Stoddard and Lovering in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, he advertised himself as the biggest store in the world, bicycle store in the whole world. I can't attest to that. I don't know. But this is circa 1887. Here's a uh, lovely tricycle. These are the high wheel bikes started to be replaced and you start to see what they called hard tired safeties. So normal sized wheels were on the bikes and, and lower down. But there was still lots of people still buying high wheel bikes. And there were small high wheel bikes over here on the right. And they had... Uh, and and they had chain drive. So it was called a kangaroo. And there's there's a an advertising poster. I know that that one's from Springfield Bicycle Club. And this is a bike shop in Washington, DC. It's uh 1886. It's HS Owens. He advertised himself as the first maker of uh of um, a lady's bicycle in the world. I don't think he did that, but for sure in the United States. And um, there's all kinds of bikes in this that are really just shows you what was on the market at the time. So there was a tricycle. This is a star bicycle. You'll see more of those in a moment. Regular high wheel bike, uh, regular tricycle. So... And this is interesting also to see they're doing their repairs on outside and there's a, a little bit of a construction going on. So this is um, a Sienna type. This is the uh, Capital Bicycle Club. And the Capital Bicycle Club got their bicycles from Owens. But this is called this is called a side-by-side -side sociable. Um, and this here is uh, a regular high wheel bike. And there's another star. They're all wearing the club hats, including the lady. And this is circa 1884. And this is from a town called Nanuit, New York. And there's a, another kangaroo. I mentioned like the small high wheel bike, the chain drive. So they were trying to get bicycles safer so they wouldn't fall over. This is an example, one of the earlier examples. And um, so this is a kang kangaroo, high wheel, high wheel, star, star. What's interesting about this is a full, full, full plate photograph, and it came in the original paper wrapper. But here's something you don't see very often in photography: is the photographer signing the photograph himself, A. D. Terhune. And also, it came with a little picture of A. D. Terhune. So, and and this here. Up here was nice. Uh, I blew it up and played with it. It reads ice cream. So this here is um, one of the first what they called safety bikes. They were trying to make them using the, the high wheel as the standard. They were trying to get them safer. So this is called an extraordinary, Singer Extraordinary circa 1884 and it's a small farming community but I, I i can't read that word i attribute my success to the fact that all my life i have never used alcohol in any form i've never touched tobacco i go to bed at 10 o'clock every night and no monkey business a boring life i'm sure but it's a very rare bike. Most of the most of the extraordinaries were ab about this height. This was geared in here so that they could lower the the wheel. 
So now this was um, an invention by a guy by the name of Harry Lawson. This was called a, a bicyclette. It was a safety, another safety, but trying to get two wheel where you could sit on it. And it was made by Singer and Company. It's all marked. You can read that. And this is 1878. And it was also hand marked. And my little story that came with this is I was at an auction and uh, I was talking and this photograph came up for sale. And I kept talking the and the auctioneer kept calling me. So finally he decided to bid on it for me. Well, I kept on talking, didn't know I owned it until afterwards. Here's another bike that he developed in 1879. This was a Lawson chain drive of Coventry, England. And um, this here photographer was Ilf and Sons, and they were they were publishers. So Just if you raise that a bit, you can start to see how the bike started to develop. There, there were very few of these made, either one. And the next one, this, this is also considered a two-wheel bicycle. It's called an auto dicycle. And this particular picture was done in Scotland in 1882. Um, and it's got the two wheels side by side. And there's actually a stabilizing rod with a little wheel, but it, it's not on the ground. And these are the drive um, bands. They're not, they're not uh, touching the ground. Those are up in the air, you can see them. Quite interesting. That guy Pearson I told you about earlier on that back-to-back Dasa -back, uh, Das tricycle, that's him on this bike. So this is called a facile, another small wheel uh, that was earlier than the kangaroo that also invented and sold in England. Um, and But this became popular ar around, the, around the world. And this picture is circa 1883. So there's the levers that, that propelled the wheel. This is uh, circa 1886. This is uh, Gormley and Jeffrey made this. Gormley and Jeffrey were uh, out of Chicago. And eventually they were the makers of the Rambler automobile. And it was called the American Safety. And if you take a look, they're similar in a way to the, the extraordinary, but similar, but very different. And here's the, the movement. And this here is H.B. Uh, Smith from Smithville, New Jersey. Uh, he invented this bike because Pope had all the patent, many of the patents for regular bicycles. This was a popular, safe two-wheeled vehicle. Um, this is going down the Capitol Hill steps. That's Capitol Hill. And this is circa 1884. And if you see, obviously, you can see him, and there's another star rider up there. And they went around from town to city to city promoting the star bicycles, and that guy was their um, most prominent uh, rider. And this here is uh, Sienna type, circa 1887 American, and it's a quite enjoyable image. You, here you've got your star bicycle again. Um, you've got a, a hard tired safety there. You've got the people enjoying their picnic and to have a camera. It's quite, quite a nice treat to complement the photograph. So you're still develop all these images seem to be with and it was purposeful. This is the early stages of the bicycles. You'll see them start to change more. 
So the facile, the same inventor that had the lever driven, also had a lever, but this had sun and planet gears in here. So that went around and around inside. And so this is an ambrotype. Ambrotype is where the, the emulsion of the photograph is on the glass. And this is circa 1889. And this here, is also about 1889, 18, it's dated, William Von Wagner, and this is called an eagle. Looks similar to the star, but the, this is direct drive, like a penny farthing high wheel bike, but there's no levers there. This is just cranks. He was a champion of Rhode Island. This is a lovely constructed photograph, circa 1887. It's from the United Kingdom. It's it's called a, a quadrant. And the wheels sort of floated. It, those are channels there. And the wheels floated. But they were to, for direction. And um, there's, there's a lamp. And the ladies are no doubt look at a road map. And this is uh, this is 1886. It's a chain drive out of England. And this person here was one of the most famous racers. His name was George Lacey Hillier. And I, but it looks like he was finished racing because he managed to get a stomach. But uh, Quite a quite a famous gentleman and quite an interesting bicycle. And here you have another side by side sociable. And I think most of these side by sides were built in England. And this is a regular tricycle of, of the era. And obviously in front of the White House. And this is a really a nice social image. Uh, for sharing and not much protection and it's it's all blockaded now so times have changed this is a 1890 it's a, a water tricycle and um, those are the little propellers And they were sealed, so they they floated. I don't know if they look like they were metal. So, but it's a, a French photograph. And here you see other multi uh, multi seated vehicles from the from the era. That's three riders called a triplet. And it's a quadricycle, so you've got four wheels, one, two, three, four. In 1884, and then the next one was built by a company called Timberlake, circa 1885. It was from Hastings in the United Kingdom as well. Sorry, the photographer was... Um, uh, Pep Peplow. Now you start with almost two similar wheels. And these were, this was actually uh, a, a Rover bicycle. And this was what was considered one of the first, if not the first commercially acceptable two wheeled safety bicycles. Um, there were by, by the same inventor, two other patterns before this, but they didn't, he didn't get, he got this developed so fast that it, it worked better. And it came on the market and had good presence in the market. So now you start to see the bike and the next, 
once this was created, it was so safe that you're starting to get the ladies, bike ladies interested in cycling a lot more aside from the tricycling. And once a pneumatic tire came out of the market, the whole industry exploded. So this is just, this is from Albany, Oregon. It's got rods there. And it's, with, again, it's a, this is called a cross frame, hard tired safety. It's um, circa 1886. And this, this is called, a, the maker was Lindley and Biggs. So this was called a Lindley and Biggs Whippet. What's so int fascinating and interesting about this is just like the early uh, mountain bikes. So you've got springs here, um, it's hinged here. It's, it's got the other um, hinging back there so that, um, you know, you, your bike now, there were no pneumatic tires, so you're bouncing on, on the bumpy roads and that kind of construction made it made it safer. The, this little badge here and this little badge here were the Cyclist Touring Club in England. I wonder if they're brothers, but and this was taken on the Isle of Man. So now you got families starting to ride the bikes together. The industry the industry was really starting to explode and i i like this it's got a uh, little bell there a horn there a bell there and proud papa that last one was 1889 this is ab about the same but this is all again this different uh this is uh, New Worcester, Massachusetts, and it's just a nice uh, mix of bicycles and tricycles. Um, bicycle for the for the youth, tricycle. But this here, this here particular bike is called an Elliot Hickory, and Sterling Elliot was the inventor, and uh, he invented automobile parts for. Uh, for the wheels on uh, automobiles, and again, all there's no there's no pneumatics yet. This is 1888. This is four tandems. Um, this was taken. Uh, um, Niagara Falls is very near Buffalo, New York, and uh, these people. They were cyclo tourists. They could have been over for one of the Buffalo, big Buffalo meets. These these were all Canadian cyclists. So this is Springfield, Illinois, and you've got all kinds of wonderful different little bikes. You got a little child's bike. Uh, this here and this here were made by Columbia, which was Pope Manufacturing. You've got high wheel bikes and this is circa 1889. In total, there's nine high wheel bikes in the picture. And now you're starting to see the end of the, the end of the eighties, big changes uh, in the industry. Dunlop was inventing, reinventing. He never invented the pneumatic tire, but uh, and he, but in eighteen, this is about eighteen eighty nine. It's England, and you've got hard tired safeties, and um, and uh, again, and the tricycle. That's that's called a tandem tricycle for the two riders. And here it is. You got. Uh, circa 1893 but it could have been earlier but he's got pneumatic tires and uh, she's got the uh, less modern bike but that would have just become 
just how the in how the marketing was changing. So now once you got had pneumatic tires in those types of frames, the whole 1890s just boomed. And these are just occupationals. I just took out some for examples. The one on the uh the one on the left is a surveyor. The one on the right's a telephone repairman. For me, what I found interesting was when I was a kid, you used to see tradesmen have these little uh, blow torches. So that's one of them. That's a bike shop over there. So this is two two different photos, but. So the left picture is 1893. It's it's a policeman from Buffalo, New York. The one on the right's about 1901. She's a geologist, and uh, she's got a shaft drive bicycle. And originally, I th was I when I bought it, I found the image so interesting that I that I wanted to buy it, but I knew it was faulted. And then somebody told me that the image is not faulted at all. What they did was they placed the, the camera on a ledge and that's why that white part was there. It was the focus of the camera. The lens could not be in focus that close, but everything else is a charming image. So about 1901 for the lady geologist. And the, this is two separate photos. Uh, circa 1896, not quite the wide bloomers, but similar to bloomers and pants, uh, pants man style. She's, uh, this is again, two photos that are put together, American. Next is uh, English, two English ladies. And I wouldn't be surprised if they were sisters, but you take a look, uh, it was about 1896. They're, they're just drop frame, drop frame, it's called. And here you've got uh, about circa 1900 with a Rochester Cycle Poco camera. And this has got, this is interesting because they had shutter like levers there, but also like some of them did. Um, I'm sure most of them it, it had the tube for um, pressing the air to for the shutter release. The next one's a lady. She hasn't got also about uh, circa 1900 American but she hasn't got the tube. She's got her hand on the shutter release. And if we just look at this, this bike for a sec, it's just so perfect uh, for what we see today. Uh, it's just, we call it a, a drop frame. Or, you know, but these bicycles had virtually they had reached a level of perfection that there was hardly any changes from the late 18, uh, from the mid 1890s through to the 1920s, 30s. They're just hard because there were so few changes. The industry um, didn't, uh, didn't like from one manufacturer to another, a lot of them were, were, so similar in appearance. This photograph is important because it's Ignis Schwinn from Schwinn Bicycles. This is circa 1896, and he's got his little puppy there with him, his, his child. And this is social history. You've got uh, Grant's tomb. You've got uh, you know, just a nice social scene. And this is, there were no cars running around. This is what people did. This is what people bought. 
This is why the industry became so popular and the product became so popular. It was liberating, free. And this is, this here is, uh, again, a social scene. There's, a, you've got a, a tandem, you've got a lady and, and a gentleman. And it's just such a perfect image. It's, uh, you know, just fun to share and, and to view and see. And it's a lot of fun. This is from Little's Mill, 12 miles from Atlanta, circa 1895. And it says, the second Sunday run of the improved order of cork pullers. August 4th, 1895, cork pullers. What they meant was after they finished their ride, they went and drank. And this is from 1896, places Homer, New York. It's a social scene. This is a, a, a rare, uh, called a crypto bicycle, but this one was made in America, that well, crypto wasn't the name in America, but that's the South English. And there's a, a black lady there in in the amongst the crew. You wouldn't have seen that in the South. And that's the Homer Bicycle Club. And this guy blew up his. It, well, you can't can't see it. It reads Homer. So it was the Homer Bicycle Club. And this image is circa 1896. It's German. And it's, um, it's just uh, such a beautiful image. You've got the, uh, the black and white outfit, the club. It's just perfect. And the gazebo behind is... And that's what a lot of the clubs were. Some of the clubs were men, some of the clubs were women, and some most of the clubs were were social men and women. And this guy started. Uh, in, he was from the United States, and. Um, he went in 1893 he went to the Chicago World's Fair this talks about his trip he mentions that well, a trip outlined on map he left Chestnut Burr from National Bridge Virginia I believe went to the World's Fair and this was interesting thing for me was the advertising for American Express. And there's his satchel. And he talks here um, about uh, sending his satchel from from place to place. So there was a lot of psychotourism. That's that's an example. These are Americans in Europe, another example of psychotourism. Uh, about the, the most interesting thing for, uh, here is this was a regular lady's accessory on bicycles for cyclists. It was a mesh, and it, there were lots of images with this mesh over the face. I used to think these photographs are faulty or the people moved or something but you, this is an example you can see the mesh so you've got uh, also you have an another camera in here and um so again 18 late 1890s So Eagles Cafe 
and there's a, an eagle. There's your so it's your eagle bicycle cafe. What? How they spell donuts was interesting. D o u g h n u. Not the way they spelled it. Two words. Or and uh, this is circa eighteen ninety seven. It's a photographically, it's a it's a lovely image. Eagle Bicycle Cafe. Well, this rider has Newport on the front, and Farber must have been the rider's name because here's the the photographer's name. So, but the interesting part about this image is that the the photographic backstop is a painted backstop of of a bicycle um, race event with the these were this were the towers for the judges and the timers and this here is from 1895 from Toronto. The trophy on display is still in existence. They have it with pride. So now it's the Royal Canadian Curling Club, but it used to be the Royal Canadian Bicycle Club. They call themselves the Royals, and they won the Drunlop Trophy three times. So for winning the race three times, they got to keep the trophy. But that gives you some indication of how important the uh the the industry the, like the industry was and this is also nice you can you can see the little bicycles they're on the trophy still one of them was missing but they're they're getting it prepared so rcbc royal canadian bicycle club This is 1895. The chain wheel was 24 inches in diameter. The chain, seven foot, five inches. It was from Dorking in the United Kingdom. It reads, it's geared to 220. And it reads in here, was with a freewheel. And it's quite the interesting race machine. Highest geared machine in the world, geared to 20. I'll just let you look at that. It's quite interesting. And mile a minute Murphy. Um, this gentleman, uh, Murphy, did the mile on Long Island in 57 minutes, four fifths. Four, sorry, 57 and four fifths second. And he was drafting behind the, the car. And here he signed it, compliments of Charles Mile a Minute Murphy. June 30th, 1899. And you see in the next, there's a, a poster for Tribune bicycles, and there, there's that picture was used, and the, there's a sign in here, so you um, for um, the Pan Am Games, so you can date that about 1901. Pan Am Exposition, sorry. Nice safeties, nice exterior bike shop. Now, Waverly eventually went on to build the Waverly car. This is Waverly Bicycles. This was, they had multiples of stores. Um, and this was, was their um, Buffalo branch. From in, so Waverly in, was in Indiana, 
This is their Buffalo branch. They've got a guy's name here. Augustus H. Knoll. And you can read here from the outside, this was the opening day. And it comes out in reverse because you're looking at the sign from the inside out. And that must have been the person. They were a classy shop. And I like the fact that they didn't have bicycle pictures. They were too classy for that. They had just everyday nice house pictures. And... start to see some social importance. So this Dudley, he's here he's selling, he's doing bicycle repairs, he's doing jewelry, there's a, a clock, he's doing watch and clock repairs. But what, what's extra interesting is Dudley Auto Garage. And when the automobile was first running around, they didn't they didn't have a place to get gasoline. There were no gas stations. So what they could do was the, the bike shops started to carry the petrol for the automobiles. And uh, so Dudley looked like he was quite the uh, quite the entrepreneur. And I got this from a friend, Jerry Byron in Vermont, who with luck will be joining us. And and this here is an uh, interesting and important photograph of some black people uh, running a shop. Uh, sorry. So on, on this side, you've got shoe repair and leather repair. And on the left side, you've got bike components, bicycles and bicycles. So they're doing, these are all frame sets in the back. And they've got signage for cash only. And uh, some people working hard to make a, a living. It's quite nice. And there's a, a lady... Maria McWhirter, who may be joining us tonight, who specializes, I met her at the Smithsonian Institution, uh, and she does uh, black cycling photography. Welcome, Maria, if you're with us. It's a very important collection. Now, this next one's an important image because it gives you the, um, uh, through the signage, open hearth, but they're doing uh, frames, They're, you've got a fork, for, sorry, a frame here, but they also made forks and stampings. So they would have made frames, forks, seat posts, and handlebars, and um, possibly mudguards. But what was important about this was by the mid 1890s, somebody could buy frames, forks, all of the componentry, they didn't, the, the they didn't need to, to have anything. They could just buy the components and just put them together. And there wound up being over 300 makers in the United States. But I'm sure that was of some, of some note. But anybody who ran a shop could start to buy components. And that was one of the reasons that uh, there's a lot of, there were hundreds and hundreds of different uh, shop selling bicycles that that they made and they did it because even the bigger companies didn't have it was cheaper for them to buy some of this stuff than it was to make it themselves this is raleigh in france the the photograph came from france but this is raleigh in nottingham england and uh gives you some idea there's about 75 
workers in there. And if out in the back, you can see all of them. They've got their coats hanging up. Quite, quite sort of fun. And there they are. They've got most all of the byproducts of assembly. So. So here's, uh, it's unknown where this photograph came from, but here's the, this is for ice. Those are the runners for the ice. Here's the, the chain wheel, but here's the big chain wheel that went, there's a tooth right there, tooth right there. That w went into the ice and then you could steer it. And this was his invention. This is circa 1898. Next one's another invention. And this one's really <clears throat> interesting. This is about 1900. I'm not sure whether they were, they were called, the other ones were called road skates. Uh, so I don't know if these were called road wheels or not. It's American. This is probably patent photography. Very sophisticated. This is uh, really, take a look how technical that is. And the other aspect is, if you take a look there, this goes around. So this is going completely around the 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 wheel, the hub's there, and this tied to your, to your leg. I mean, it's pretty extensive engineering. So this is called an Eiffel Tower bike, and it's a tandem. You've got uh, the, the chain here going up, and you've got a chain here going to the back. It's about 1897. And this particular photo was used in a, a magazine. I sort of like the way that people are intrigued with what's going on. This bike is called a Dursley Pedersen. They're making that style of bike still today. Um, the person who's on the left who's riding was a famous person by the name of Tom Hughes from the United Kingdom. And um, what's he got? He's got a lamp, a bell, a front, front bag, and a front carrier. A very popular bike, oh, a very a popular bike in England at the turn of the into the twentieth century, but they were popular for for that. This photo is about nineteen ten, and this is what they call an, an Orient Ten from the Orient Bicycle Company. It was twenty three feet long, three hundred and five pounds, and went as fast as forty five mile per hour. There were no brakes and no gears. Um, what I wanted you to see was when I told you about the cap. So there's a star on the cap. This guy was probably a penny farthing rider at one stage of his of his career. And he, here's an electric bike, circa 1896. Um, American photo, battery, and uh, quite an early rare example of a wonderful machine technology development. And here's a, a, a Native American 
this is a, a bear skin. Obviously, that's that's his preferred mode of transport. I don't think he was changing, but there's a, a bike there, obviously, and it was probably for this would have been could have been a store. So, bike was there serving the people. I guess so, sort of a, another rare image, and this is. This here is about 1890. The last image was about 1897. This is again, this is the same about 1897. It's a, it's a toll road in the United Kingdom. Um, it's from Dunmo in Essex, there was um, a gas lamp, but He's got his golf clubs with him. And there's a couple ladies riding bikes. So um, in England, I wouldn't be surprised if that building's still there. There also, this is a, a carriage full of people. And this one I pulled out because for me it's it's eye candy. It's just such a great image. Um, clash of technologies for sure. Blacksmith, but he's shoeing the horses. What I find sort of if you can use the word cute, you got the kid with a the bare feet. There's the workers shoeing. And you've got your your cyclists. This is about 1898. And some of you might know one of the most famous photo, uh, pictures, oil painting, is called American Gothic. It was drawn by Grant Wood in 1930, and it it's just iconic. Well, this is as close as I'll ever get to uh, American Gothic, but here he's got his child equate to the front forks. The ladies look similar. The the structure of the windows similar. You've got a gentleman there. And then we've got the bikes balance with the horses in the back. So this is my American Gothic. Uh, the original was shown the first time at the Art Institute of Chicago. And this is uh, probably oh, 1894. And talk about Chicago. Um, here's the Chicago Hospital Ambulance Corps. And I guess as a collector, you know, it, it's really faulted. And this has been cleaned up quite a bit. But, you know, you, you get a chance to buy a photograph. And it's so interesting you, you likely never will see another one let alone have a chance to buy it so you have to buy it this is all this is all damaged and it wasn't until yesterday when when i was looking at the photographs again that i found this guy here that there was another person behind it so and this is um these this is a tandem bike so they had the length on a tandem bike, but they didn't put in the seat. This is about 1898. And here comes Santa. So this is about 1898 also. And his signage reads, Christmas up to date. But it, 
I'll do this so you can take a look at. And he's got a stocking here, the tradition of a stocking here, and a stocking there. It's covered a bit, but there's there's the front of the stocking. And it wasn't till I uh, Coca Cola did a, a fat Santa that the fashion changed, and all of a sudden he became a fat fat person. So this is about eighteen ninety eight. This picture. Merry Christmas, Merry Xmas, welcome. And I just wanted this is wrapped up, so I think that those are ornaments. And as a photograph, this is the importance of this because it's, it's a regular, it's a tintype and the guy's just got a regular safety. There's nothing special going on, but you've got camera, you've got lighting equipment in the studio. This is a studio shot and you very rarely you can see sides and, and fronts and, and, flooring and different backdrops, but you hardly ever, if ever, find equipment in the photograph. So this was interesting to acquire. And it is what it is. Maybe his signature trick, I can't tell you, but he's got his bikes he's holding sorry he's got his chairs in the mouth i can't can't figure out what he's doing any more than what he's doing so this is a stereoscopic card and when i when i scan my photographic cards for showing i do all of them with half plus a little bit so that the people can see that it that what i've used is uh is for um, is is out of a stereoscopic card. So this is Spanish American War, circa eighteen ninety eight. You've got a a bayonet here, and he's wearing spats. I found that interesting, and. There's an interesting stand right here. And it, you can see it's sharpened at the bottom. It was probably meant for outside and uh, to go into the ground. He's also got nickel plated spoke, sorry, uh, spoke ends making the star pattern. You can see it there also. So this is the Cameron Highlanders on their way uh, um, they were going to the Sudan. This is in 1898. They, they fought, fought in the Sudan. And in 1899 they went down to the Boer War. But this is such a wonderful photograph for me and opening me to the Cameron Highlanders Bicycle Club. What I was told was that these, um, these people, these wealthy people, that a wealthy person would, would finance a whole troop of, of military people and travel around with them. It's an interesting example. This is a, is a famous American uh, circus person. His name was Walter Nielsen, and an American. And he had a nice, important bicycle collection, which is in uh, University of Davis in Davis, California. And um, he wrote a book about his life and his travels. 
and he talked about how he had to carry his unicycle up to the top of the that's the pyramid of Cheops, I think. But how he had to carry the his unicycle up to the top. But in the photograph album that I got, uh, there's a picture of a uh, Egyptian, I we'll call him a laborer, handing <laughs> Nielsen the unicycle. So not everything he wrote was was straight up. So, and you can still see his, his bike collection at U Davis. It's quite a good one. This is just eye candy. It's just a lovely picture, circa 1904, of uh, this youth. And it's just, just a lovely image to share. Now, this is called an autochrome, which was a French development. And it's one of the earliest forms of colored photography from France. And this image is about 1908 in this part of a stereoscopic card. And this is the Fairbanks to Valdez. Uh, and it's got Ed, S, Orr, and Company, which is the same. So these two are it's with the same company. And also, it's they were U.S. Uh, mail carriers. What I noticed on the bikes was that they were wrapped, which sort of made a lot of sense. I don't know why this one's different, but maybe they needed more traction than, and, than on the front wheel. But it seems that the, th those are consistent around the tire. So I was thinking he must have he must have lived quite close to where the, the that outpost was. And again, this is Ed S. Or Mail. Pollard Roadhouse. Well, that's her name of the place, Pollard's Roadhouse. When the rail system went around the United States, it was quite extensive, but the roads didn't always go go with them. And but there were often small roads, but they didn't they, they were not cared for. They were just used for horses and stuff. Um, railroads were straight, level, where all the towns were were along the rail tracks. So um, rail bikes were quite common. Uh, some people here might know the name Cooey. They did the guns, the rifles. Well, Cooey also made, made these. And in this case, you've got metal posts and you've got with, with wood. And because they were triangulated, uh, one two, three, you didn't need to worry about like your wheel stayed on, on the track. And this was quite a, a logical and extensive uh, use. And I, I wrote a, an article for the wheelman on railway bicycles. And there were a, the other ones that you'll recognize as pump cars. Uh, they were called railway philosophies. I don't mean to rush you, Lauren. We got about five minutes. Right. I've got, I'm at I'm at picture number one nineteen, and I've got one hundred and twenty one. So we're just about there. So this is circa nineteen eighteen. Camp Zachariah Taylor in Kentucky. 
uh, they are treating the flu. That's what this text reads. And what it, what it reads is, a busy scene during the flu epidemic, YMCA hostess house, Camp Zachary Taylor, Kentucky. And then you have one of my favorite pictures of all time was to each her own. And you have uh, obviously grandma with her spinning wheel and granddaughter with her bicycle. And the Halloween goblins came in. This is a, a tissue stereoscopic card called the Diavolos from 1870 or 71. The tissue behind, I just put my the light bulb on and took the photograph. So there's your Halloween picture. And this is it. That's it. I have no more pictures for you, friends. But I thank you all so much for coming and spending the time with me. I, I had a lot of fun doing this for everyone. If anybody needs to get in touch with me, they're much more than welcome. You've got my name on it on the the invitation it's l-o-r-n-e dot shields like lauren dot shields at gmail.com anything else that can if anybody wants to ask me a question they're welcome to well we've got a couple of minutes we can do like two i just got to be out of here by 8 30 so um and we'll see if we can have you back either way but let's take a look at the questions real quick Just want to say thank you, Lauren. Wonderful yeah. presentation. Yeah, thanks for signing up, Robinson. It was kind of you to write. Mike, you got anything to say? You always have something to say, Mike. I got a quick yes or no question from somebody. Do you have any photos of bike races that took place at Fitzhugh Hall in Rochester? circa 1887 to 1902? I have something, but not that. No, the answer would be no, but I have some signage and stuff that was probably there. The, the photos were from Rochester. If I could ask just one small uh, short questions as well. Sure. Thanks. About the, the, the flying bike, was there ever a picture of his, there ever been an existing like flying bicycle, the one with the balloon, which was filled uh, in, in the most, um, in the beginning of the presentation? Yeah, the, the one oh. from Mohawk, yeah. New York. So I don't understand he, your question. Had he been, been flying and was there uh, a It a was picture? flying. Oh, wow. And that That was no doubt made in a studio but yeah. the, the smithsonian has all of the family it was quite an enterprise that guy was big time that family was was professional family in the uh air up in the air business thanks that's lovely to hear well Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Lauren. Wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you all for attending and sticking through. Appreciate your time. And hopefully we can do something like this again. And thank you again to Lauren. And have a great night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thanks again. Thanks,